getting okay. Yes, that's what you're getting. Okay. This is the metal perspective. Uh, sorry we haven't been on the past couple of weeks. We've had uh, concerts. Door. And we had some family over the previous. Yeah, family over the previous, you know, before the concert. But uh, my name's Pete. This is... You all know me. <laughs> I think you called yourself <laughs> dickhead last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, Swift Jesus. Swift Jesus. Swift Jesus. <laughs> All right, and uh, with that being said, we got uh, Mike Hutchison, veteran of the front line of the Florida death metal scene, going to talk about some uh, Florida death metal and some uh, gear yeah. for recording and writing music. Yeah, All give right. us a plug, man. What we up to? Uh, so, uh, currently, I mostly play Legator 7 strings. That's really my go-to. I got put up on them about four years ago maybe and uh i haven't looked back since you know yeah. um i've went through three of them i've had strandbergs and ormsby but at the end of the day my current legator is where i'm gonna ride with nice nice so um what do you use it for uh pedals you... I, honestly i play straight through my head the only pedal i got is a noise suppressor no shit. I just straight through a 6505 plus head and a mess of cab. Well, it fucking can't, sounds good. You can't go wrong with that sound. <laughs> no, it sounds good. It really yeah. does. You can't go wrong with that. So, and you know, any, you use any special uh, picks or strings or anything? Uh, you know, people get a little fucking partial. Weird yeah, yeah no, I'm just like, uh, I like Prodigy. Anything that makes me play better, that's the one I, you know, I'll switch out depending on you know, what style I'm, I'm pl- going for. If it's like old school death metal or if it's like brutal death metal, dep- you know, I might switch it up. But for the most part, the heavier the better. You got the active pickups in there? Uh, I got Fishman Influences. Nice. That's what I'm going with. At first, I didn't care for them. I was like, man, this, there's not enough sizzle like EMGs and, and all that. But after I learned how to tone in my doll with a man, I, I swear by them now. Right, see that that's the one thing too I, I noticed everybody you know, I want I need to get the latest and greatest EMG, you know. Yeah. And it's the EMG's not the only one out there. I mean uh you have the DiMarzio pickups, they have the super distortion, fucking sound awesome. And that's uh, not even an active pickup either. Yeah, the same way with the Dib Activator. Yeah, that's a yeah. passive one too. Yeah. Uh you have uh like the Seymour Duncan uh dime buckers. Yeah. Are fucking crazy. And yeah. uh yeah. What are the other ones? The uh, blackouts and then the you blackouts. got the winners yeah. or something like that. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good companies. It just seems like everybody wants to do the EMG. A lot, lot of people are swearing by either bare knuckles or the uh, Fishman influences. Yeah, they're pretty hot. Pretty hot yeah. commodity right now. Yeah, I hear a lot of good shit. You know, I, and that, I, you played us a sample shit. We need to get up and where we play sample, and it really sounds. It translates well. Over Man, it sounds really good. You know, it's got a good good crunch to it. It's it, it's really driven sound. So, so uh, what kind of amps you going with now? Sixty five hundred five plus still old school still, old school stuff. Well, I mean, a lot of people are going Tube. to the Kempers and the Helixes and the Quad Cortexes and all that. But just give me a tube head and plug straight in. I ain't got to worry about too many defaults, you know, other than a tube blowing or something like that. Other than that, oh, it cool. works for me. That's cool. All right. So, uh, you got anything new coming up? Yeah, actually, I do. I'm in the process of ordering some uh, new, the new Mackey Thump, uh, I think they're XT series, 1400 watt power monitors. And I'm going to get the Mackey Thump S18 sub to go with it and an electric drum kit. Sorry if that's a um, blasphemy. But yeah, Bless. blasphemy to all the <laughs> drummers shit, out here. Man. But I'm trying to get something accomplished. You know, I already have a whole bunch of good recording gear, and I'm gonna have all that. So yeah, when it comes to recording, and you know, uh, Mac has got some good stuff. shit though. Yeah, yeah. 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 nothing Mac wrong with an electric drum kit. <laughs> it, it it'll serve its purpose. You know, yeah. drummers come over. We, you know, we don't have to worry about if it's one particular drummer's drum set. It's mine, and everybody can change it to however they want to yeah. use it. You know, what I mean, I don't have a problem with it. Let's just. Write and jam and record and create some brutality. It's great for yeah. recording and you can yeah. record yeah, straight in instead of probably, plugging yeah, it into an amp or anything like in, that. Yeah. yeah, and I in like the way it works, like you can plug it into your computer straight by USB, yeah. 
and then you can use all your drum uh, programs and plugins that you might already have. So like I use Superior Drummer and Easy Drummer, and they can actually mimic the same whatever kit that you're playing through, whether it be Jason Sukoff or whatever. Right. It, it all gives you the town or tone. So if you got like the the death metal MIDI packs for your Easy Drummer, or whatever whatever drums that they're using on there. That'll that'll be how your drum set comes out sounding. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's that's what drove us. Um, that is a Mackie board that we're using, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it's just people swear by them. Uh, reviews are, are great. Everybody, whether it's you know any kind of uh, board, instrument, amp, anything, yeah. uh, or and it wouldn't be an amp, but a, a preamp. You, you get what I'm saying. Uh, everybody loves. Uh, Mackie stuff, so I decided I wanted to try it, and it's been pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I had some Thump A's, some uh, Mackie Thump 15 A's before, and uh, I took them and used it, led a whole, sh led a whole show, used them and everything, and it worked. It, it worked good. The guy that that had the club, he now has his own set of them, and he's got a sub on them too. And Mackie just came out with their first new. This this is the first new lineup of that series changing since uh 17 it's been the same all the way up to you know prior to 17 now it's this is the first time they just came out with something new and right i was like i gotta try it so got any new shows coming up uh no no unfortunately not at the moment i'm in, still in the process of rebuilding mm. um right now i'm gonna i want to work on kind of like getting more involved in this type of a field, you know, like a YouTube channel based off of, right. you know, the the community he, here in Brevard in Orlando and Tampa for metal scene and, and hanging out with the dudes while they're at practice and getting footage and letting everybody see what it's like when you're in a band for real, you know? Certainly yeah, one hell yeah. of a metal scene out here, that's well, for that, sure. That's the one thing we were um, wanting people to send their music in because we we're getting struck even though we're doing, <laughs> like... Even though we're do following the rules. We're following the rules, doing the reviews. Like, music reviews will play like 30 seconds and go, ah, hey, you know, drums can use some work, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, we have a, a website, and uh, we just urge everybody, you know, send your shit in. And I know it kind of hurts, though, because, I mean, I'd like to get you back in here so we can review some of this stuff. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm real hard on people. Hey. I'm, I'm fucking, you know, I'm real hard on. Oh, well, we talked about, uh, you know, like Swamp Tooth. We we reviewed uh, yeah. Chris's LP, Swamp Tooth, and uh, we we talked about Three Knuckles Deep too, his other band. Um, yeah, yeah. I think we talked about Corrupted Saint. I think. Uh, yeah, with with Swamp <clears throat> Tooth, it was what the one song that I really liked, and, and you know, was really put together well. And uh, the other ones, you know, I had like rough shit to say about it. Yeah, but overall, but it was a good overall, LP. Yeah. You know, I've, you know it's, it's good. It's a good start. And, you know, of course, if you're going to go into the studio, they got to tweak. You know, yeah, yeah, def like definitely, device. definitely. But, uh, yeah, I like your idea, man, uh, getting a YouTube channel and, and getting somebody in there. But we, we have to go out to Johnny's house and take video footage of Three Knuckles Deep. And, mm -hmm. and why they're, I think they're in the process of recording right now, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But well, Fuck yeah. Um, and just all the other bands, you know, get up with the guys from Demon F and, and, and all the other bands that are, you know, really promoting and doing stuff for the scene and, and get behind the scene footage of them, you know, getting it down, getting it on. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, and of course, you know, I'd, I'd like to talk to them, get, you know, a you know, video, hey man, <laughs> like an interview maybe, say, hey, you know, um, I'd, like, yeah, I'd like a video, you know, would this be good, or could I put it on? Um, YouTube or you know Rumble whatever, and have them you know say hey yeah this is this is my song you know blah, yeah blah, blah. and uh, so we can sit here review it, play it. And I'm sure that most of them would would be definitely down because I mean it's free publicity yeah. to them. You're pushing th their music in other avenues that might not oh, have yeah. already been ventured. That's so, the idea, yeah. You, yeah. you know we push yeah. the scene stronger and harder. We get more people involved and bigger things happen. And it, oh know, yeah, it's oh, yeah. Alive I, I forever. You know, I wish it was blowing up a lot more than it is. I think it's a pretty sad uh, state that uh, you don't have the places, I mean, like really good places that, you know, you, you have the shovel head. And, and the, uh, the haven, haven, yeah. you, need, you need a few more places. There's, I guess there's a place two hours south in Coral Springs that plays, but I don't 
Yeah. Uh, some in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to they're trying to make a scene hard in Melbourne. Uh, and um, he's trying to do all that he can with making that scene strong over there. I, I, if I if I know, I think an issue just occurred with one of the venues that you know I don't know what's going to happen with it. I guess there was a big talk about one particular individual that worked there and his past charges or something. And, and now it's like turned into a big thing so I don't, I don't really necessarily know what's going to happen with that but we lost the Rubik's which Ant had you know had got the reins of that and did all that he could and I take my hat off to him for doing all that he could as far as getting bands and shows that was my one of my first starts with Corium as far as right oh uh, yeah they being there the, yeah and um so yeah like he's you know, where one door opens and one door shuts, and vice versa. So ho- hopefully, I don't. You know, and that's the. I, I don't want to knock uh, like the Haven. I like the Haven. Yeah, I like yeah, the yeah. Haven. But I, I don't think the that venue really does you guys justice. Yeah. You know, I, you get in there. You know, it, it's real tight packed in there. You, I'm not gonna say I haven't had a uh, bad. You know, I've I've always had a good time. Yeah. But I think. Um, I don't know if it's the neighborhood or the way it, way it is inside. Uh, if you actually had like a real dedicated area for you guys and people to fucking eat and drink in the back yeah. instead of being in your shit, and you can actually get a fucking pit going in there without people getting hit at the fucking bar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, a, a redesign or a different place would be. Oh, we have the Abbey, but that's they book much bigger bands there, like yeah. DSI. Well, and, you know, and that's but, that's where, you know, I, you should get little guys, you know, little yeah, bands. Yeah, I don't call you guys little guys. I mean, yeah, underground, no, yeah. Started, yeah. Uh, underground, yeah, yeah, the underground in there, and you know, I don't think it should matter. I mean, fuck, I think you should have a place where you know, you look forward to having, uh, uh, say, obituary come play, and then you guys yeah. come play, or, or fucking. Uh, deadline or or um, Jetter or something come play and and it not not matter you know have uh, Tim Ripper and, and just not look forward to the big names right yeah. I think you should play everybody well that's kind of how that's kind of how the Haven is I mean shit how many bands how many big bands name bands have played at the Haven you got yeah, yeah. all the thrash metal and death metal bands right. that have played uh, there tech death bands yeah and fucking uh, Hammerfall and Flossum and Jensen played there together yeah. on tour uh yeah, uh, we've seen Massacre there, yeah, Obituary, Obituary yeah. yep, friggin' Nile, Incantation, yeah. Yeah. Em- Emulations Arch played Fire, there, Beyond Creation, yep. and uh, you you uh, you yeah, played there played with uh, Rings of Saturn. Like Rings of Saturn. Uh, um, shit, who else was there? Uh, <laughs> we can keep going. With, yeah, with they, fucking yeah. bands that played the Haven. Yeah. so many, so many, and we're talking, you know, big bands. And then I don't know bands. what happened with um. Vader the sound bar. There. Is the sound bar shut down now? Because I don't hear no shows. I like, heard it's down shut no down. I heard they were reopening it, though, in, like, a different location or something. Hmm. But I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that. What shut it down? You don't know? Uh, I'm not sure. Kobe? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably. I, but, uh-oh, I said the bad word. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. We're getting we're getting taken yeah, off. Yeah, was another one too that booked a lot of big names. Even though I didn't like that place because I got kicked out of the side there, but <laughs> but right. it's all good. I didn't like that the way that place was set up. Yeah, was, was worse than the quirky. Haven. Like the the bar, you walk right in, and there's the bar, and the way the stage was long ways, and, and it and it was only this wide, so you had right. to walk through. Where the we bathroom, saw the maybe you had to take the piss. Oh yeah, where we yeah. saw yeah, yeah. I yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think I think if, in order for us to get more shows, I think, you know, the fans and everybody else has got to become more supportive. Because I, I know, like in this area, yeah. no, normally, I, I don't I don't go to every show, but I try to make a lot of them that are out here just to support the scene. And I, I honestly don't see a lot of people that should be supporting the scene. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the bands that are that are here. You know what I mean? Like. You, you know, it's like right. we're, we've already established this. We don't have to do that no more, you know, or whatever. But I, I think it's really all in order to get more stuff, you, you know, to appeal to the masses, we're going to have to be popular again. And uh, for us to get popular again, we have to have the numbers. Yeah. You know, everybody's on hip hop right now country hip hop, thug rap, and e- everything's turned hip hop. You know but, what I mean? It's right. all and shit. The, this is where I have so much appreciation for Iron Maiden. Whenever they go on tour, 
they always have somebody who's not not necessarily tiny, an underdog, but yeah, a, definitely like an a underdog, way, yeah, like a way, you know, like that, like Ghost got before a lot got, of their fame before they even got famous. Where it was, a lot of the fame came from going on tour with Iron Maiden. Yeah, they were good at the time, but they, you know. Yeah, I've, I've heard so many people talk about, like, how great they are, and I've, I've given them a chance, because, you know, I'm easy, I'm easy to please when it comes to metal. Like, I listen to fucking every subgenre, right. you know, you name it, but I tried giving Ghost a chance, and I'm like, nah, I can't get into it, sorry. What I think also, instead of, uh, I know I know it sucks for to be in a band <laughs> and not being able to play your set. Yeah. I think they had to have, like, mini festivals to where you can have, like, you know, six to eight bands from 6 o'clock at night till whenever and have your headliner play late yeah. you know have the most songs and, and get like you know three or four good songs in there instead of you know trying to play a whole set list so you have a lot of a lot of bands in there giving a sampling of this is our fastest shit this is our hardest shit yeah, yeah. you know this is our uh, melody you know it, just it would be nice to have be able to do like a mini you know well, that Met- Central Florida Metal Fest is kind of like a, a, yeah. a lot of the big local backs that, you know, that are from out of Orlando and all these other places, they, they actually, uh, they just had one recently and it was at a brand, normally they held it at uh, the Haven, right. but now they held it at, uh, I think, a- Ace Cafe or something, some new place, and uh, I've I seen a lot of stuff online, you know, big stages, like real nice size, and it looked like they, they put a lot of money into it because it, Rock 101 was even talking about it on their commercials and whatnot. So I think it all goes back to the fans, you yeah. know. If the fans ain't going out supporting these guys, people can't go out there on their own anymore because it costs too much money in gas, too much money in this. And, man, it, it's hard. Yeah. I think it's getting worse and God, worse. I need to open a place because I know what I would do. I would, I would do um, a once-a-month battle of the bands. Uh, and it would be like strictly, you know, uh, whatever genre. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. You know, say, say like we'll, we'll carry, uh, we'll have a power, power metal, death metal, and, and thrash that night. Yeah. You know, and have like a fucking total battle of the bands, and people just call up or, you know, email in and say, hey, I want to be in here, get your fucking slot, play two fucking songs, yeah. and then go to town for, from say like four to fucking two in the morning. Or four to midnight, however, uh, and uh, you just gotta have a place that's gonna have two stages. So you know, once that band's over, you know they're start. Yeah. You know, and then they're breaking down. Somebody's coming up. Once they're done, that starts. And just have, have something big enough to where you can have, you know, or even have the stage big enough to have two bands on there to be able to walk on, start playing while they're breaking down, yeah. and having uh, you know two boards. So you can just plug into the fucking board. It'll go to the speakers. Just something to where you can have some some kind of a competition you, so everybody can fucking hear that. You could probably, even though I know you just mentioned their venue, but you probably could talk to Maria Haven about actually setting something up like that. You, you, you know, honestly, because she, she opens her doors out to a lot of people and gives yeah. them opportunity to, to, to try to do something because, you know, she supports the scene, you know, and... Oh yeah, that that could be something that if you you know really started, you know, building and designing you know an actual you know getting a plan, and then getting other people involved and pushing and to make it happen, that could be something that could actually could, could you know could be yeah. could be formed, you and know, think, and make it where like whoever wins, you know, you win five hundred bucks. It ain't that much, but I mean realistically, how yeah. many people are going to show up that ain't just there because they're playing. Or just mm-hmm. like you know, have the bands in you know some of the door money. Yeah. Like uh, you know, you got to pay like fifteen bucks to get in. Five bucks goes to the, you know to the band. And yeah. Like every band that comes in, it's like you chip in five bucks, and whoever at the end of the night is going to get the fucking pot. Yeah. You know, that would I think that would be pretty cool. I mean, you chip in five fucking bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Bucks, yeah. Bucks, I paid for a whole it's bunch like of fucking, concert tickets. Every band has yeah. to do that at some point. You know, you got to pay to play sometimes. It's, it's like something. buying a lotto ticket, but you got to work for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's something that you know you might want to really think about and consider, and maybe you know with people you know and whatnot, maybe think about trying to get something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing too would drive what drives it also is, is food. 
Yeah. You know, you got to have food at some of these, you know. Concessions. You, know, you got to have some kind of concession. Even at least popcorn, something, you know. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's a killer. That's why a lot of people I see, you know, even at the Haven or some yeah. of the other places, they'll walk the fuck out and come Right back, next like, door, they got that pizza place yeah, with pizza, pizza place. Slices. Like Subway, big, yeah. or Taco Bell or something, wherever, yeah. whatever's close. And yep. they're, they're <clears> leaving, <throat> you know. Mm-hmm. And it sucks to have to go down the street. Wait thirty minutes and you've just missed a lot of shit. Yeah, but yep. uh, fuck yeah, man, I, I need to open a place. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I wonder yeah. if that lot on the corner here on Fifty, like just around the corner down US One, is uh, still there. But because uh, there, there was a, uh, there, I forgot the I forgot the name of it, but it was it was a bar and it had a stage. It was a decent size too, but it's been shut down for a long time. I think the other we thing is... We can buy that and remodel it. <laughs> not not just having, like, metal. I, I know we're, you know... And just have, like, a lot of different people play. Because you can't just have... You go to one thing... You, 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 say you have a place that fucking just does rap. You get in garbage. Yeah. Get, yeah. You know, well, especially know. especially if, like, you're not in an area where... Yeah. Where the scene it's, is... It's, it's yeah. booming, yeah. Like, yeah. here in Titusville. Titusville, Brevard, yeah. now. Yeah. We, we couldn't survive off of only booking, like, metal bands to play. I right. Mean, no, just you wouldn't... We we uh, we, you we have to get the like punk said, rock bands and all that stuff like what <laughs> yeah. Ant's doing. He yeah. he gets all kinds of people, you know, from the metalcore to there's not a whole lot of death metal around here, but to metalcore to deathcore and and a lot of punk. And uh, he's trying. I I take my hat off to him. Yeah, I think I think uh, the once a month battle of the bands. It, it wouldn't matter where the fucking event was. Yeah, you know, it could be held any, all over. You know, yeah, come in all over. It's like fuck yeah, here's my five bucks, man. What's yeah. a, what's a pot up? You, you, you probably yeah. one week it could be one month it could be at the Haven. The next week, oh, let's take this down to Tampa and get those death yeah. metal bands down there at the Mug with you know with Heather Mug and and, and you know. Then That'd you can be, go down somewhere else, you know, and then yeah. you start building up a name and a reputation of who you are and what you're putting on and promoting out f- for right. bands. People are be like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. It'll be beneficial right. for the bands, and it gives uh, the fans an audience to get to find out about other bands they never even knew nothing about. Yeah, not to mention walking away with a couple bucks. And yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, that's that's a big driving deal. That that'll get guys out. Yeah, that that'll get guys driving from fucking Jacksonville yeah. down here. Yeah, yeah. Not, not to mention, it'll each month it'll give people a drive to improve. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and within a couple months, uh, promoters and you know producers are going to catch wind if it starts blowing up, and and then you never know who's in that audience oh, while yeah, your yeah. band's playing and mm-hmm. who might want to sign you a scout from a yeah from a record label. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. E- even though you know a lot of stuff is a lot more easier to just be independent nowadays, mm-hmm. but uh, I mean if yeah. you're one that wants to be yeah. signed, you're like holy shit, so so and so from yeah. like Nuclear Blast uh, or since like media Blade. or whatever, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or even who's in the audience, you know, because. Um, George Corpse Grinder could be out in the audience and hear your band and be like, "Holy shit! I want these guys to open up with us on our next, you know, Kill the Fucking World tour." Yeah. You you know, especially if you're out in Tampa or if you're in Orlando, you never know. People are going to be out just to see who their possible, uh, uh, who might be the ones that's going to knock them out of the box of the position that they hold. So we end up getting locals and shit down there too, like you know. the guys from uh, Nico's, uh, you know, Titanium Tart, and, and you may fuck out. Yeah, hell, you there you go, rocking guys, ribs. Yeah, you know, may get those guys playing down there, but you can probably, you know, talk to. Uh, I can probably, you know, we can all get together and say, hey man, we can do a fucking battle of bands, and I'd like you to, you know, kind of uh, rocking ribs and have yeah, Nico host yeah. it. <laughs> there you or, go. Or you know, just somewhere and just yeah. have, have have a name attached to it. And, yeah. You know, if it, you could do something like that even here at um. I saw Ann do something at Club 52, and it was a big... They had the midget wrestling, and they had a bunch of oh, big yeah. bands and big stages. And if you just had one one big name that's from around here... Yeah. You, you know, to for their name just to be out there for more people to want to come in, just if it was just for that band, but to get a chance to see and hear other I'll, bands I didn't even know. I'll tell you what. If I can get 12 bands to, to say, you know, get a solid shit, pick a day... We'll fucking do it. I'd go down there right now and say, "Hey, man, I want to rent this motherfucker out." I'll say, you know? my, I say, my fa- my me personally, my favorite way to discover a new band is to see them perform live. You know, 
sure you got you know you know YouTube and you know iTunes all that blah 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 but when you actually see them yeah. play live for the do first time do you sound time, like what you do on that yeah. album you recorded and yeah. cut and paste and chopped yeah. up and right yeah. Like when I saw Hellfire, Hellfire with uh, you know open for Death Angel, I had never heard of those guys, never heard of any of their material, and then you know I saw them play and they were really freaking good. Yeah, and, and I think and I started know, and I started following them and buying their albums. So. I think when you get something like that going, anyway, you, you get a uh, you're gonna have a lot of kind of deck shuffling with yeah. the bands because yeah. they'll be like like hey uh, I know you're playing with them. You know, I'd like you to come play with us, and you know, yeah, come yeah, play yeah. a couple. You know, and you probably end up getting a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find it's like, well, I know this singer's better. Yeah. You know, or this singer doesn't have an attitude, or, or this bassist is fucking phenomenal, and he'll compliment what I can bring. Yeah. And then you could probably get a lot of shuffling that way too. That's a that's a good idea though. You know, it draws a lot of people. You know, like I know I go to a lot of shows, even if it's not the kind of music I'm really into. Mm -hmm. I'll go just to scout for other musicians. I'm in the oh, audience, yeah. man. You play drums, and if you do, do you play fucking death metal? No. Because if you do, I need a drummer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe. Well, I mean, you, if they're playing something that'll translate over. It's like I know you can do this, so I you can do yeah, this. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like you're really fucking good. You can do this. That's uh, that's definitely a good, good thing to. We uh, we gotta work on that. Yeah. You know, I I really want to work on Sounds that. Sounds like a plan. Actually, I'd like to own a fucking place to do that. But you know, like you said, the club, you know, get that going, and getting you know at least twelve bands, you know, in, in like a two song max fucking deal. I know you another know, guy that's shot. that's wanting to look at getting a club too. So, like I mean, if money could be generated with a couple, you know, with a yeah. couple individuals and. And they figured out how it could work, you know. Huh? You I know, know. we get um, deadline in there, but yeah. you know, yeah. it just like I said, you can have like uh, uh, three different types of yeah music. categories. You, you know, know, your heavy thrash, death metal yeah. stuff, and then, stuff. So yeah. speaking of deadline, uh, Mike and I uh, were at Stewart's house last weekend uh, with Edwin. Also, mm -hmm. Edwin showed up, and uh, we jammed for like. What four or five hours? Yeah, oh, I had a good time. Yeah, friggin' um, but yeah, friggin' kind of uh, you know, a, a blend of like you know, death metal and and power metal because that's what you know, like as far as guitar playing goes, Mike's more death metal and mm -hmm. then Stewart is more power metal, but you know, also groove because he plays with Deadline. Yeah, a little bit uh, of melodic. Yeah, you know, that, it, yeah. it blended pretty good. And then you know, me and Edwin are just kind of like you know. <laughs> We're like amateur musicians, but you know, we just kept rhythm. So it was yeah. a good time. Yeah, but that's all you could do. Did good. Yeah. Both of all, you did good. Yeah. You, you wasn't nervous. You got out of your comfort zone and you just tried. If, if it fit, it fit. If it didn't, you keep your rhythm. Yeah. Plus, thing. plus, we all know each other. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, you know. Yeah, it's always fun. You know, get a good uh, jam session going. So I haven't got to talk to you since after the obituary show. Yeah, no shit. How, how, what was what was your uh, thoughts on that? I love the obituary show. Yeah, that's uh, who I went to go see. I'm not. Yeah, that's uh, who uh, I really speaking of Florida Death Metal, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, who we're there to support. Yeah. yeah, I like them. I like them live. They they have. Um, I don't know. It's a kind of a. They just have a good time. It seems yeah, like. they yeah. have a real good fucking time. Yeah. You know, and uh, the other two bands. Um, what was it, Carcass uh, and Cattle Decapitation? Yeah, they're not... Their sound, I was going to... Like, I really went solely for Obituary. Yeah. But because i never seen Carcass. I've seen all the other bands, but i never seen Carcass. And, um, man, they're, to me, they're, they're, their sound, like, it, it, it wasn't... Yeah. It wasn't coming across as good as Obituaries. And that's not me being biased because biased I'm more into right. that sound. Yeah. But, like, e even Cattle Decapitation... Their, their tone through the, the PA system, it just wasn't working for them. It was like rubbing sandpaper together. Amara um, Martha, yeah. you know. Squelch. Once, once again, I was solely there for obituary, but even Amara Martha, their sound was good and point on, oh, yeah. as opposed to cattle decapitation and carcass. Oh, yeah. Amara yeah. Martha, was, they it, were the... They put know. on a show. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like Amon what happened with, show, uh, well, with the Intemptation effects. at the Iron Maiden concert. Yeah. I, I know the band can play really well, but the... The way the sound was set up was yeah. not. Oh, that was the wrong gear. 
Yeah. So and whatever band whatever you know was, has awful. their own shit. Yeah. But uh, they're they're playing a small venue. I mean, you'd figure they would have had. Well, I don't know. It's just you know, you're right. There's something I don't think any any kind of production or any kind of um, effects could have fixed either the either the yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just like oil and water. Fucking the first fucking band. It's like what the fuck, man. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Eventually, yeah. it, it might have been a, a conflict in writing. No, it, it, it could have just been like whatever tuning they're using, as opposed to what you know, yeah. obituary is playing in, or 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 whatever. Like they, whoever the sound guy was, might have been the sound guy f- yeah. for obituary, and he did the sound for everybody. Or who, who knows, you know, whoever they. I say because yeah, I, I, I obituary never disappoints though. <laughs> no, obituary was good, and that's why you know we we. When you heard Obituary and Amon and Marth, it's like, ah, who the fuck were the other two guys? And it was just like, yeah, yeah. I sat through that shit. I, I think one of the, I think Carcass though too was like one of the biggest hypes that a lot of people went there for because I don't think Carcass has played in the United States, let alone Florida, in like decades. Yeah. So it was like, you know, and it, it was a hell of a lineup too. I mean, I like all those bands. I don't know. Personally, and I'm, my, my, my favorite out of them is Obituary, but the other three I love too. Yeah, so, I, I just I, I don't know a, what kind of cleanup they could have done. I have no. I, I'm in a yeah, loss. Yeah, it's like you know, obituary's tone though is so like signature one of a kind. Like you oh yeah, you can't yeah, mistake no, that and tone. And, like, well, well, their quality is just is just. Plus, you know, they, you know they've been over out, been out thirty years. You yeah. know, they got yeah. the experience. They know what's going on. And they they keep it simple though too. Well, yeah. the, the other thing is, is I, I don't think if you're not a fan of obituary and you hear them on the fucking radio. I think you become a fan yeah. more after seeing them live. Because it the music's different, even though it sounds the same, but the music's yeah. different. They have um, they work together well. They, they have a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, well and, they and love these are these are guys you can tell they really love what they do. But and, and that's a lot of it too is the infectious enthusiasm. Yeah. If, if the band up there just like Again, when we saw Iron Maiden, the band was going nuts, having a great time. Uh, dude was swinging his guitar around the whole time. I mean, they were just having fun the whole show, and it just makes you enjoy it that yeah. much more. Yeah, yeah. yeah when you got like, like you know, speaking talking about obituary, like you know, when you know John Tardy comes walking out on the stage, he's just you know, it, it's like they're a death metal band, so it's like ah, you know, die, kill people, whatever, whatever and such. But they they, they smile while they're playing, yeah. and it's like that's what makes it, you know. That's yeah. what makes it, you know, the atmosphere so much better. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't, I like, um, well, death metal's not my favorite. Yeah. But, and, yeah, I, I can't, I don't want to butcher those two bands anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. you know. It's no, just, I get it. Yeah. All you can say is practice makes perfect. Well, I mean, I don't think. Yeah, it wasn't. Like it's said, not, they've been around just as long as any of them other bands, in, and yeah. yet at the same time, just their tone that yeah. night. Maybe Which it was in a venue, whatever they was running maybe. through. Who knows? Yeah. It just wasn't their night that night. Like, yeah, yeah giving the benefit of the doubt, but you know, it's just. So a lot of people too that you know, like like say, death metal is not their first uh, go-to subgenre. You listen to say, Cal Decapitation. And then you listen to Carcass, you have no idea who those two bands are. You can say, oh, they sound the same because it's just, you know, really fast and they're, and they're just screaming. But you listen to Obituary. Obituary is, is death metal, too, but their, their style is, it sets them apart from everybody else. Yeah. Well, yeah. Obituary you can understand, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to, or somebody with good ears to understand Obituary. Because um, it's not Burt Metal. Uh, obituary is good it's clear it's clean um, you know, know death metal I mean yeah, how clean it be. <laughs> yeah. but you, you, it's, you, you can understand it you, you hear the guitar you hear the bass you hear the drums everything separates itself it's all put together well they're, they're, they're like Leonard Skinner for death metal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there you they're go. They're like they're good old they're Florida, Florida boys. boys. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're good old yeah. Florida boys playing Stratocasters. Yeah. 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 yeah, pretty much. But, uh, and the same with Amon Amar. They, they got the... 
crowd up in a fucking frenzy. Yeah, yeah I like, definitely was rowing the boat. Rowing the boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Yeah, so they, they, they do have a good time. They brought out fucking, you know, I got a fucking horn, but th- this thing is fucking tiny. Yeah. Compared to what they had, I mean, <laughs> yeah. this thing is like. I'm like, hey man, I got a fucking, I got a big horn. No, they they come out with shit that like you you have a gallon it's of like fucking. Like a goddamn yeah. ox horn. They got yeah. mead in it too. It's like yeah. this fucking big old mead horn. We're so trying to get drunk. I suppose that's a good transition to how was that show? Yeah, it's it's a fucking good show, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I I would definitely do it again. The pit etiquette was perfect. Nobody yeah. was crying or bitching. Everybody was helping everybody. No fights. Yeah. yeah Nobody no was fights. being an intentional dick. Even yeah. the big guys, you know, they were just there to have a good time. Yeah. 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 No, none of that kung fu shit either. Thank God. Yeah. No fucking elbows. Yeah. You know. Good times. Yeah. It was fun to watch the pit. It, you know, yeah. It's the first time I'm like, hey, fuck, I like one. This is pretty cool. And yeah. you don't have that aggressive fucking prick out there. Yeah. You know, yeah ramming himself into fucking people who aren't participating is like, ah, shit. And, and unfortunately, that that's a lot of what a, a people who don't listen to metal or don't go to the shows or anything like that, they always get it misconstrued as that asshole that's beating up on everybody in the, or being, being a dick throughout the whole show, that that's all the fans. Y- yeah. It's not. You can, just like you said, a on Marth, everybody was yeah. having a great time helping each other out. You could totally have that show. It's just... Well, Every Mon- now and then, there's yeah. the one asshole in the crowd. A Monomar too is, you know, a, you know, they're they're melodic death metal, but their their theme, you know, they're, yeah. they're like what people would call Viking metal. So they're kind of a swing swing your mugs kind of music, yeah. you know. People yeah. just like want to say they they want to get fucked up and listen to a Monomarth because they want to you know listen to Viking metal or some shit. Well, hey, what did the Vikings <laughs> do? They got <laughs> fucked up and listened to war stories. Uh, yeah. So and and that's kind of the thing. It's like the the whole Viking culture, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Till Valhalla. Yeah, yeah. No, I loved it. it calls out to a lot of people. Excellent, excellent show. Yeah, no, it, it was a good time. Uh, definitely. I'm, I've seen a lot of people complaining about the prices of uh, merch and stuff, but I mean, bands got to make their money. Yeah, it's to be expected. Well, that's what it is. Yeah. And, and yeah. he was saying something at the Maiden concert, and, I, and I've been with, to a few concerts with him, and. Seeing the uh, shirts go from like forty bucks up to fifty, sixty yeah. fucking dollars. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I get it. You know, inflation's gone up, and uh, oh. John had paid his first fifty dollar shirt with his maiden, and, <laughs> and then yeah. we go over and see, and it's like holy shit, they're they're fucking expensive here too, man. E- yeah. e- even before all that, I remember one time, the first time I ever seen it was uh, with Beyond Creation, sixty dollars for a tank top. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, I, my girl wanted it, so she got it. But you know, I had never seen it like that. You know, it's maybe, maybe buy for the hats. A, maybe for a hoodie, yeah. you mean sixty or eighty bucks or something like that. But <coughs> I'm gonna support it if I want it. I'm gonna buy it. You know, what I mean? yeah, I got, yeah. you know why I got so many band hats is because they're yeah. always cheaper than the t-shirts. Yeah. Well, this, is my, this is gonna be my new thing, man. I'm gonna start getting fucking koozies off yeah. everybody. Koozies yeah. or guitar picks or you know a patch. I'm, I want the skateboard decks, but man, hard, hard, lately the bands haven't been coming out with them. Yeah, no shit. It's, I want the decks. I got the DSI once upon a cross deck. I, I want them all, all, all the bands I want. Nice. Give me the skateboard decks. I, yeah, decks are fucking good. I met a guy, I think it was at Corn. It was uh, Corn and Zombie. And uh, he got a tattoo for every new band he went to go see. Oh, wow. He had a Johnny Cash tattoo. <laughs> And it was the classic one where it's fucking Johnny oh, flipping yeah. off. Yeah. Nice. The classic, yeah. Here, I forgot about this. Ah, signed obituary. Oh. Same oh, thing yeah. that you got. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Uh, these were actually pretty good. Forty fucking dollars a show. The records That's, are normally like can't thirty bucks. That. You can't yeah, beat you can't it. beat it's that. That's cheaper, that was cheaper than like, their shirts. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> cheaper than their shirts. And it was like, it's two bucks a signature. Yeah. I think their shirts were 50. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah. I just got a carcass shirt because I had all the obituary from the Tampa show. Oh, shit, man. But that yellow carcass shirt, that's definitely. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, I'm pulling out plastic motherfuckers. <laughs> so, yeah, it is a, uh, <clears throat> I mean, you can't have fun with it. Fuck it. Yeah. It's supposed to be a red disc. Nice. It looks pink to me, but it's a red disc. Cause of death. It's yours like that. I too? think it's the way it's the light's catching it. it. Yeah, because yeah, from over light. here, like it looks red, then it does look pink. Yeah, probably late. Well, the light turns it pink. Yeah, yeah. you know, look at it. 
But, That's pretty uh, cool, though. Well, they had a green one, too. Uh, it was their live album. It was green. And it, it was also signed, and that was also 40 bucks. But, uh... Well, hell yeah. Yeah, this is, this to me was worth it more than the, more than the shirt was. It's, you know, it's signed. It's a record. I can play it. <coughs> yep. I can touch it. It's something that, yeah. <laughs> and I think the only shirt at that show, maybe on Mar Mar had something was, that had a tour date on it, was that... What, the Great Heathen Army? That yellow, uh... Carcass shirt. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Did they have any tour date shirts with the obituary? Uh, yeah, the one I bought did. The yeah. orange one? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I loved it. I, I wasn't sure how Amana Marth was going to sound. Uh, they sounded perfect for, for being live. And as usual, obituaries yeah. sounded really good live. Yep. I'd say obituary sounds perfect if you. <laughs> if you listen to, like their their recorded albums, like you listen to like say this well well this is the live version, but if you yeah. listen to Cause of Death or you listen to Slowly We Rot or Back from the Dead, any of those albums, and then you and then you watch them live, you're like holy shit, they sound fucking spot on in their recording. Like you you would think they're lip syncing, you know they're not. But what's that say right there? Live what? Live infection. Okay. And the only gripe I have with Obituary is when you're at the show. When you're watching, and it, it just the time goes like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like man. motherfucker, it's over. Yeah, their set didn't seem that long either, man. Because they weren't the main, the main. Yeah, but they should have yeah. been. <laughs> they should, yeah. yeah, I agree. But you know, they could have played a whole set. Uh, but it just seems like, and it's like with some of the good concerts, they they go, they're fucking fast. Yeah, I was like, I was bummed. I was bummed they didn't play certain songs. Like they didn't play "Cause of Death" or "Chopped in Half" or "Slowly We Rot." They didn't play yeah, any of those. Yeah. I was like, oh. I mean, still, it's just like, you know, still seeing them live, though, it's yeah. worth every penny. Worth yeah. every bottom dollar, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah. Uh, obituary definitely has, they, they play a good concert, and, yeah, I'm on a Marth plays a good show. We already got the yeah. definition between the concerts and the shows. Mm-hmm. Theatrics versus uh, just... Theatrics, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the cool thing is, they don't need the theatrics either. You know, I'm on a Marth, they're just, they're really good. But yeah, it's a, it's definitely a show. So yeah, well, what else we got going on here? Well, I uh, could move us on to the next one, and that uh, would be uh, well, we could either talk about Nazareth or we could talk about Rob Halford. Oh, what's up with Na- Nazareth? The singer died. Oh no shit. Yeah, S- singer huh. died. Yeah, you messing with some bitch. Was that about recently or a week and a half ago? A week and a half. Ago. Wow, fuck. It yeah. was unnoticed. Two weeks shit. ago. Yeah. At least we're noticing it now. Um, I don't know. I haven't gotten anything about... I haven't checked in two or three days, but I haven't seen anything about why he died, just that he he died at, like, 76. That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I was I was pretty bummed out. Yeah, Nazareth, you know, I, this one, one band we didn't... Uh, that is a precursor of metal, more like hair metal. Or, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, but uh, or uh, southern rock kind of thing, you know. Uh, but Nazareth, Nazareth is good, is, though. Like, yeah. like Hair of the Dog, that's like a heavy hard yeah. rock song, you know. Nazareth's but, another band I could see having fun up on stage, yeah. like really like interacting and having a great time. Yeah. But uh, yeah. all right. So what's up with uh, Rob Halford? So Rob Halford and uh, was talking about performing with KK Downing because they performed at the Rock and Roll Hall. Yeah, with uh, Dolly Parton and shit. Um, And there was actually an interview with Downing, and he was talking about uh, the uh, difference between Ripper and Halford. And, you know, obviously they've been in... uh, Downing had had whatever issues or, you know, whatever was strange from him and hadn't played with him for a while. But he didn't badmouth him, nothing. He goes, you know what? I, I tip my hat to him because... When we were doing tours and or we were performing and he was, they were just singing and singing and singing days and days. Yeah. And he goes, at, at a certain point, I'm exhausted and they're still going as if they're perfectly fine and fresh. And he was, you know, praising him. And Halford had said it felt like he had never left. It felt like Downing had always been there when when they were playing together. That makes a lot of sense, though. If, you know, anybody that's been in a band yeah. with someone for a long time, you know, yeah. there's a marriage, there's love, and there's yeah. hatred, and there's uh, all kinds and, of other stuff that goes with it. But and clearly, there what? there's a good friendship there because it's the be- the ones that I you're think, really truly friends with that are like it feels like this person's never left. I haven't talked to this person in forever. 
Well, it I still feels it goes, like they've always been there. It goes a little beyond friendship at that point. I mean, friends are friends, but when you have like a brotherhood, yeah, you can go back and do shit like that. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter how much you fucking hate them, you go back and you still love them. You know? And it's, yeah. it's like that fucking deep love for that person. Yeah, unconditional. And you're love. able to do it. You and know? then how I did Downing leave Priest. I don't remember. I, do I never. Remember. I never. As much as I as I as I listen to Priest, and everything, I never. <laughs> yeah, I I don't I know a lot of their history. I never understood why he left. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't remember. Um, he I, had, I don't even know why Halford left Priest too, like back in the nineties. <laughs> was that know. right after that um, uh, Painkiller? Yeah, yeah, that, that was definitely a good album. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, Jugulator was good though too with, with Ripper. I mean, that was mm-hmm. like for Priest, that was like fucking like extreme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he did have also a few words to say about performing with Dolly Parton, and he said he felt honored and, and privileged to be able to do that. Like, Yeah, how many people in the metal scene get to say, yeah. oh, I got to play with Dolly Parton? Yeah. And that, that's the really cool thing about her, is that people across genres, metal, rock, yeah, yeah. pop, they all love Dolly, Dolly Parton. Parton. Of course. And Dolly yeah. Parton's, a, and I've, I've seen wow, her the way she acts with her fans, she's a very sweet lady. Yeah. Very, very classy lady, yeah. as he likes to say. Yeah, I call it classy. Yeah. She's definitely classy. And he also said, "I sang one chorus with Dolly Parton, and the world, or the world's gone nuts." <laughs> yeah. Judas Priest for Rob Halford uh, joining Dolly Parton on stage was a, hast- a historic uh, textbook moment or history textbook moment. Well, yeah, I give I give well, Dolly got, you know two legends on stage, you know. Yeah, I give uh, Dolly Parton props too for uh, when they they were trying to induct her into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and she said. So not a I'm yeah, not she rock says, and roll. I'm not rock and roll, but I appreciate the offer. I give her, I give her respect yeah. for that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and then that's why we had that whole show. You know, and I call it the Music Hall of Fame, and not the fucking Rock and Roll Hall of yeah. Fame. Yeah. Because you cannot have fucking Eminem in there. No. With fucking metal and shit, and call it rock and roll. So apparently, Judas Priest is only the third metal band to ever be inducted. Yeah, of course. Next to, of course, Metallica, Go Figure, yeah. and Black Sabbath. Yeah. How the fuck Maiden's not in there yet? Pete's, is I don't know. It's probably because Bruce well, Dickinson. Well, Black Sabbath's in there. Yeah. Bruce Dickinson actually, and <clears> he doesn't like it, like, doesn't you know, care for it. Fuck right off. Kind yeah. of attitude. Which is, you know, rock and roll in itself. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I agree with him, you know. It, when they start, you know, having rap and blues and all that shit, they have a. Uh, Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame. They have all that yeah, shit. Yeah. I don't see any, not a one fucking metal band or country band in those. Well, blue. I guess blues, like blues, you can kind of make an exception for because that was kind of a predecessor to rock and roll. Well, but uh, I, don't I mean, because you got blues rock. Like how many bands, you know, like classic rock bands have blues or blues rock, blues riffs like ACDC, Leonard Skinner, and all that shit. Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jimi Hendrix is all rock and roll, man. But you know, I get, I get you. Well, the only thing was is like uh, Elvis Presley and Chuck Berry and all, and all these guys that had kind of a bluesy but yeah. real fast, yeah. You know, a rock and you know, coin rock and Literally, roll or whatever. Yeah, inventors of rock and roll. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, like, like you're talking blues, or you're sitting down with a guitar and, and you're you know crying about you know. Yeah. Your, your, your wife whatever. fucking your neighbor and all that shit. <laughs> so, a l- little break up from that conversation for a moment. Uh, Halford said that the very kind and, and loving personality that she has up on stage is also how she is off stage. So, she doesn't have that persona that she puts on. It's just her all the time. Hmm. Yeah. Well, so, she is that very sweet person. As I'd imagine him with, you know, I've seen him do the Christmas stuff and. You yeah, know, talk to people on YouTube, and he seems like the same guy on stage as he is. I love his Christmas in life, albums. You know. so. um, and or he did that COVID thing. Yeah. Make sure you stay safe. He's got that horse wet. <laughs> <laughs> and then KK Downing, as to why he <clears throat> left, uh, said an ongoing breakdown in working relationships between myself and elements of the band and management for some time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I get it. It, it, it's just like being stuck with your family for well, a Well, that's the big thing is, is I, I don't know. It's it's hard with the elements of the band. I don't know what that means. But with management, they are not family. No. But the band you would consider family and management is not. They're, 
constantly trying to push. Hey, you know, we would like to we would like to you know sell your name to Coca Cola, but we can't. So we got to play this, and then you know the half the band's yeah. like, yeah, fuck it, you know, we'll take it in the ass, and we'll do this for Coke. And the other half's like, no, I'm here for the music. I want yeah. I like I like my shit the way I like my shit. Uh, things like that. I don't know if you know anything you know money wise or or you know, a direction that the management wanted them to go is what the problem was but I get it uh, that's always a problem yeah it's mo- money's a big bitch um, there's a question here on one of these websites did Pantera rip off Exhorter oh <laughs> I, I see I, I've been seeing that lately too like yeah. how in the fuck <laughs> after all these fucking years you're gonna pull this shit so cause if you listen to Slaughter in the Vatican um, Exhorter's very first album it does sound very similar to Vulgar Display of Power, but and it pre it predates Vulgar Display of Power, I believe. It's older than Vulgar Display. I think it came out actually. I think it came out the same year Cowboys from Hell did. Yeah. Modern Vatican. But, but but they both came from that same like area. Not like I mean, Phil and Selmo came from New Orleans, which is where. Exhorter comes from, where Crowbar comes from, all those guys. Uh, you know, bands like shit, I Hate God. There's so many freaking bands that come from New Orleans, like metal bands. Uh, but, I mean, they, they kind of, they, they both, I mean, I don't know, they both kind of started groove in a way, like groove metal and thrash, I guess. Because yeah. then when you listen to, like, their second album, Exhorter's second album, uh, The Law, it sounds very, you know, Pantera ish. Yeah, you know it's it's well, got a lot of groove in it. I I think in but the that's the that's as, as you as you progress as a musician too, and yeah. you 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 can this motherfucker. I don't know why he doesn't play, but you um, John's picking it up. But as, as a musician, you realize that some of the chords, some of the notes that you're playing, repetitive the way they are are the same in other songs, but it's the way you fucking yeah, yeah, play yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it, of course, shit's gonna sound, you know, hey, wait a minute, that UFO sound like the, that one Iron Maiden song. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, it, it's just the way it's played. Yeah, but you're playing the notes or the scales in a different pattern. Well, here, and, uh, you know, Or, you know, giving it an extra note, yeah, but it's yeah. like, it sounds the same. Uh, Everything's been for done. Instance, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I could take Don't Stop Believing, and I could play that next to 22 by Taylor Swift. They're the same exact chords. Just played slightly different in, or in, in a, maybe a slightly different tempo or instead of a quarter note one place, it's a half note another. Yeah. You know, they're, they're very just slightly changed. So it's the difference between similarities and and actually trying to rip someone off. There, there's an intent when you're trying to do that. But if, you're, if it's similarities, it's similarities. You're not gonna. Be yeah, able to everyone's form gonna have original entirely all the time. Yeah, everyone's gonna have influences. Yeah. And why is this being brought up now? All of a sudden, there's this Pantera <clears throat> tribute band. Probably because the now. Pantera reunion, yeah. as they call yeah, it. But the Pantera, I think, I think it's been I, done. Dimebag's been dead for a while, so you know. Yeah. He's not really here to defend himself. His fucking face. He'd probably just buy him a beer and you know yeah. settle well, down. I think. Back. I think too. I, I actually read what Kyle actually said, and he said that it's. It's that's all like hearsay. It's nothing it's about love because we're both from like the same stomping grounds in New Orleans, right, right. Phil and Somo and there Kyle Thomas. But a so. lot of songs have have a similarity. It, and you know what? To me, that's the best way you can answer that. And because I think, it's yeah. just it is. What and and it is. I think and and when you listen to how much Pantera changed from when <clears> they brought uh, Phil and Somo into the band, you know, kind of transitioning from their their, you know, glam hair metal phase into, like, you know, more thrash, you know, groove. Uh, I think Phil Anselmo had a lot to, you know, had a, had a big take on that. So, so, so it's, they're both New Orleans boys, you know, that, you know, come right. from the same stomping grounds, and that's kind of why they sound similar. Both their music came out at around the same time. Yeah. They're early shit. So I also got a, a, the reason as to why uh, Halford, uh, Halford had been wanting to do a solo project and had the best right. he had the blessing of the entire band. However, a studio executive said, you're going to have to quit if you want to do a solo project. Mm. So he resigned. Oh, shit. 
Well, it's like, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, when uh, Bruce Dickinson wanted to go off on his own, own deal. I mean, we do a lot of Iron Maiden references today. Yeah. But uh, when he did, it, did his own thing, they're like, yeah, we're not going to produce this unless you do this. The We want you to do a cover and, and like, fucking Maiden Dickinson. Oh, yeah. We don't yeah. do covers unless there's, like, you know, something just comes out of our ass. We're like, yeah, fuck it, you know, whatever. And they wanted him to do the zoo. If you ever hear him sing the zoo, hmm. he half asses the fucking zoo. Yeah, you can and, tell he didn't he, put it's on his all. It's also better than it. what the fucking scorpions can ever do. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell he doesn't sing it the way he, he normally sings his shit, and it's a, a lot better than what the fucking scorpions can ever do. Yeah, hmm. it was pretty funny. Yeah, uh, fucking motherfuckers, man. It's like <laughs> we're not gonna produce this shit unless you do this for us. Like, fine, fucking take. So he did the zoo and it never got fucking. It was never put on an album. But the recording's out there. I've heard it a few times. It's funny. So then uh, Ripper uh, left because he wanted to do other things. He, he goes, I was great friends with Priest and I, I love him. But he, he just wanted to branch out. He wanted to make more money, do some more different things. He wanted to branch out. Yeah, yeah right. Oh, shit. Ripper has so many freaking projects. He, so well, many, as, as so he many said, bands he's played with. As he said when he uh, he met him, he goes, "I've always got something going on." Yeah. 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 yeah hey, what do you got coming up? I mean, oh, yeah, I, he, I mean, he played with, he played with Iced Earth. He played with uh, Ingve Malmsteen. He played with the oh, fuck. Yeah, he gets you around. He gets around, man. He's got like he uh, charred walls of the dam. They're like a friggin' they're like a death metal band, but rippers like singing like ripper so it's not like you know yeah. the guttural death growl it's so ripper. it's an interesting mashup there yeah because like because it's steve DiGiorgio and uh, richard christie from death are on that album or on that project and imagine they're on that project because did you ever hear death redo uh painkiller yeah oh yeah, that was yeah. Good. yeah and then you got uh death's uh control denied too which yeah. is like you know or you know i shouldn't say deaths it was well, yeah. it was death basically, just yeah. in a different, a different style of music. Oh sure, shit. <clears throat> it was like prog rock, kinda. So apparently, Belgium is a place to be. Fucking June. Europe is the place to be when it comes to fucker, the man. headlines, man. Pantera disturbed a Montmartre arch enemy. There gonna be a hundred artists in, in fucking Belgium's uh, grass pop. I want to go to one of the extreme, uh, extreme scene uh, festivals. Across the pond? Your, Europe yeah. in general seems to have I'm a saying, hell of a uh, lot bigger metal Vodka. scene. No laws. You know what I mean? And they want you to come on the stage and act crazy. Yeah. yeah. Vakken Festival uh, in Germany. You got Hellfest in France. Yeah. For, and you got all the good shit over there. I think I just seen something for next year. I think uh, Massacre was on one side of the page and then I forgot who. Somebody else. Maybe Campbell. No. It was somebody else. But yeah. I mean, that's where you got, like, you got really big headliners, like, like, Hellfest and, and Bakken, like, you'll have bands like Maiden and Priest, and then you'll have, you know, like, you know, all, like, your, you know, mo- probably your most well-known death metal bands, like, yeah. Obituaries played Suffocation is on the other yeah. side, they always over there, I was saying, you have bands like Suffocation, Cannibal yeah. Corpse, yeah. uh, you'll have, like, you know, your fucking, your, your, you know, power metal bands that everyone, you know, loves now, like, Sabaton, and, yeah. And all those guys. Yeah. So, so apparently Buck Cherry's uh, coming out with a new album. Said there are no fillers on the Buck Cherry upcoming album. Buck uh, Cherry's still around? Yeah, I guess. That's, hey, it came out with that fucking hair metal, you know. Yeah. That was actually a pretty good song. Chuck Shoulder, Statue, and... Yeah, yeah i seen that. They want like 200 something dollars for that thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I saw that, yeah. It, it's it's like a, it's like an action figure. Pla- yeah, a plastic like, figurine thing. Of him playing the guitar, and then it's the scream bloody gore zombie on the throne. And I might have to get it. <laughs> <laughs> they got a bunch. They got like Pantera. I think got, I am going to get it, man. Yeah, they got like Zach Wilde. They got a bunch of shit. Yeah, but they Chuck is the one I would want. Uh, fucking Doctor Feelgood guitarist will uh, John Johnson dead at seventy five. What do you guys think about John Five playing with Molly Crew? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I ain't gonna take nothing away. That dude is a beast. Like oh, yeah, Rob John Zombie, 
he's so far out of his league playing. He, he's dumbing down his ability to play, and that dude is a phenomenal guitar player. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't realize it, but that yeah. dude no, is he, up there we for him. shredding and yeah, yeah, we we chicken been, picking all kinds of stuff. Been at like six zombie concerts and motherfucker, man. Well, because Rob Zombie plays with he he plays with everybody. Yeah. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah. You know, uh, and watching John Five up there fucking around and. Yeah, you know it, it's a good show. I mean, it really is. It's so a good. Concert, he played with Marilyn Manson show. too, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. Uh, he's a bit political, which you know I, oh, I, I urge he? all the bands to to not be. You yeah. know, because you kind of that's where you divide cut your, your fucking yeah. balls off. That's kind of where you like lose fans. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Well, you lose fans. It's like, hey, you know, uh, you know, fuck you, motherfuckers, didn't take the vaccine. It's like, really, man? I just. Spent fucking a hundred dollars on on one fucking ticket for your show. Yeah. Dick. So I guess yeah. uh, I guess when Napalm Death was here, right? For again, they, oh, yeah. they said they they said fuck uh, DeSantis or something. Yeah, but they uh, always uh, talk political like, stuff yeah. that's on the other side. Yeah. But uh, Rob Zombie's not political. And, yeah. But uh, John Five, he is an incredible fucking talent. And yeah, you're right. He's dumbing down for Motley Crue. Even, even for Motley, Motley Crue Crew. too, because that dude is like yeah. a it's super. Like, Fucking five year old could play Motley Crue. Mick, Mick, that was like high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know that's high school shit. Mick Mars yeah. though, though was was pretty good himself though too. He was he good, was, but like John Five is like he's up he's, there like yeah. you know with Steve Vai yeah, and those he's, type he's of dudes top, playing. Yeah. Top fucking thirty. Yeah, fucking yeah. Guitar he's a good player. guitar player. He's got his own solo band too, right? I believe he's uh-huh. probably got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he's always got something going on. You'll find him. He's like, yeah, he played with fucking Dolly Parton. That's, that's fucking yeah. next week. <laughs> but it's going to be odd seeing a blonde-headed dude outside of Vince Neil and Molly <laughs> Crew. You know, and he's got really blonde hair. So there's an actual Metal Hall of Fame? Is one of yeah, Anthrax uh, was inducted. Twisted it, Sister to be inducted in the Metal Hall of Fame. I didn't know there was a Metal Hall of Fame. Is it like a Revolver Metal Hall of Fame thing? or uh, is it? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm sure. Magazines. I'm find out. Fucking ridiculous. Because I remember uh, Anthrax was inducted, and then Scott Ian said, I, I kind of find of uh, insane that we're inducted before Iron Maiden. Yeah, Dee Snyder, uh, he got a little fucking... Yeah, you, you can't do that. You can't come into Florida and say, fuck the Santas, when you know, most of Florida loves the well, guy. that was Napalm Death. Oh, yeah. They're from across yeah, the you, pond. Well, and, <laughs> you know, with, with this guy, you can't, you know... Uh, he said some fucking anti-American shit, uh, Dee Snyder... Uh, not too long ago, well, you motherfucker. Well, he's also the one yeah. that, that that said uh, John Schaefer's a piece of shit and a disgrace to the metal community. Yeah, that too. Being it's involved like, on, with January sixth or some bullshit. <laughs> so, so like, speaking of another guitar player, uh, the guitar player from Alter Bridge, uh, Mark Tremonti's a really super shredder dude too. Mm-hmm. The Canyon Club, Agora Hills, California, Metal Hall of Fame President CEO. No, it's Pat Guistaldo. Yeah, no, it's special rock of he agreed with Snyder and rock of his band ambassador. I yeah, it's huh, thirty five dollar tickets. <laughs> That's how it's cheaper than an obituary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, it, it's Twisted Sister, man. I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and it is not obituary. Uh, a Rom signs relation, another one. I do. Uh, music video. Never got into them. Yeah, I love Rom Stein. Oh yeah, did wasn't uh, Misfits or wasn't they just had a big talk about them like they were supposed to do something and then they backed out of a tour or something? Something like I that. I think they yeah. played a Halloween show in oh. Dallas like it was the original lineup like Glenn Danzig and, oh, yeah. and Jerry Only and all those guys. They played yeah. some like ha- Halloween like rock fest or something in Dallas. I think you're right. I think Rumstein backed out of... Oh, yeah, there Misfits cancels a New Year's Eve concert in Vegas. There you go. Okay, yeah. You're, yeah, Misfits canceled New Year's Eve, and that was on the 22nd of November. Why in the fuck did they cancel? Well, they've always had issues with Glenn Danzy. <laughs> That's why, like, throughout, like, the 90s and most of the 2000s, they had uh, Michael Graves as, like, the replacement. He seems like a pretty guy anyway. You know, like Glenn Danzig. Yeah, I heard he was cool as shit because I guess uh, uh, that Mikey one dude knocked him out. I think. <laughs> yeah. You know who I'm talking about? So 
so Mikey um, Lawhorn, I guess back when he lived in Virginia and played in like a group metal, little group metal band, uh, he said he opened up for Danzig, and he said Danzig was actually a really cool dude, okay. like a really nice guy. He said Deicide was dicks. He opened for Deicide yeah. too. <laughs> oh no shit. Yeah, that, that's been heard of since the beginning of time though. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Benton, Benton was yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just you know seeing uh, Danzig in in like the early days, he seemed like kind of a dick. Yeah. You know. Uh, now he may have been humbled a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, he, he, people change. Man. Yeah. People get fucking humbled. I mean, look at Stallone and and you know just that actor. He'd probably fucking do anything for you. I mean, he seems like a real fucking nice guy now. And I remember, you know, when I was a kid, I, I hearing he was a fucking prick. Yeah. You know. But yeah, it says uh, unforeseen uh, personal circumstances. So yeah, they're not. Uh, well, I guess he's still a dick. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean it could be like somebody died or somebody got sick in the family or some shit. Uh, nobody wants to discuss, you know. I'm gonna have to move the car, ain't I? So why? you gotta move the car. All right. Well, I guess we can end, end wrap it up. Uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up. Mm-hmm. Going on for an hour, mm-hmm. hour six. All right. So that was uh, the uh, podcast, uh, Metal Perspective. Um, that motherfuckers. Oh wait, I normally do tune in the pink one. <laughs> <laughs>